What's it like to have 500,000 subscribers? That's the big milestone we've just crossed. And I say we because we have literally done this together. Whether you've watched 100 videos or just this one, thank you. I literally could not have done it without you. My experience of having 500,000 subscribers did not happen overnight. So I'm going to answer that question. But the best version of my answer comes by comparing it to what it's been like for the past seven years to get here. That struggle makes this moment even sweeter. And let me know if you personally relate to anything in my story by commenting below. Let's start with the origin story. What made me want to start a YouTube channel in the first place? Well, as you may know, I'm a full-time college professor in communication. Around 2014, I noticed that most of my students in class were looking at their phones all the time. And in many cases, they were watching YouTube. And I said to myself, if I want to keep my students' attention, I have to get on their phones. So I started making videos, long PowerPoint lectures on another channel just for my classes. But other people started watching them too. And that was enough encouragement so that two years later, 2016, I started to put out short videos for the public on this channel. How did I start my channel? Well, I started with zero subscribers, just like everybody else. I knew nothing about making videos when I started. I was just a teacher. I owned no gear, but I timed the conversation with my wife perfectly. She had just made a big purchase, which I supported. So I asked her, how would you feel if I bought a camera? I'm thinking about making a YouTube channel. And thank you to my wife, Erin, by the way, for being the most supportive and encouraging wife a guy could ever hope for. So I purchased a Canon T5i camera. I posted my first handful of videos on May 31st, 2016. I made an announcement on Facebook to friends and family, and I was totally pumped that about 40 or 50 people subscribed within a couple of days because of that announcement. But sadly, some friends of mine literally thought I was doing it as a joke. Oh, communication coach, very funny, and actively discouraged me. Some of them laughed out loud when I showed it to them. The lesson for me was that I have to be careful who I was sharing my dreams with. But I still said, who cares? I've got 50 subscribers, a supportive wife, a supportive son. Thank you, buddy, by the way. That was all enough encouragement to keep making videos. So as we cross 500,000 subscribers, this is all still in the back of my head as context. Was it successful right away? No, not at all. I accumulated very few additional subscribers for months. I'd wake up every morning, open the laptop and check the YouTube analytics. Some days I would get one or two subscribers, but most days I would get zero new subscribers. It took about another five months till I hit 100 subscribers. But I gotta tell you, at the time, I was completely thrilled with 100 subscribers. I felt like this is working slowly, but it's working. And I made a commitment to myself. When I reached 100 subscribers, I said, I am going to commit to making videos about once a week for five years. I didn't tell anybody this about my wife. I said, no matter what happens, I'm going to make videos for five years. I don't know where it's going. This was 2016. But I said to myself, Alex, at the end of five years, if you end up with 500 subscribers, it'll be worth it. That's 500 individual people who will be listening to me talk about communication. Reaching that goal was going to be good enough for me. And for five years, the thought of quitting or taking a long break or changing the focus of the channel never occurred to me once. I personally don't make commitments lightly. But once I do commit, I stick with it unless there's a really compelling reason to change my mind. So I stuck with it. How long did it take to become a successful channel? Well, the channel today is now a little over seven years old. You can see the numbers on the about page that show that journey. It took five months to gain 100 subscribers, as I mentioned. It took a full year from the launch to gain 500, and I was beyond excited. I thought it was going to take me five years to get there. And it was almost 15 months before I reached 1,000 subscribers, and two years and a few months to reach 10,000 subscribers. The pace was picking up fast at this point. At 10,000 subscribers in 2018, I thought to myself, this is turning into a genuinely successful channel. I wanted to keep growing, but to me, that was the moment I felt as if the experiment was a success. Did you have any channels that were role models? I am a big believer in role models. They can save you years of trial and error. From the beginning, I was watching 
Connor Neal, Carl Kwan, Dan O'Connor. Thank you guys for showing me the path. Their channels were all much bigger than mine. So let me say for a moment, thank you, fellas. I looked up to you then, and I still look up to you now. I also started watching tutorial channels for YouTube, like Think Media, Video Creators, Roberto Blake, Amy Landino, and Justin Brown's Primal Video. Thank you for teaching me how to run a channel. Then one day on January 2019, I was working with a client in California. I ended up with a whole free day alone in my hotel in Ventura. Online, I saw that Connor Neal's channel, one of my role models, had just crossed 100,000 subscribers. His was the first role model channel that crossed that milestone back then. And his success totally inspired me to dream bigger. I had around 13,000 subscribers at the time. So I took out my journal in a hotel room and I wrote for a few hours. And I distilled it all the way down to what are now famous in my house, what I call the four big crazy dreams that all connect to my channel. One of the four big crazy dreams was that my channel will cross 100,000 subscribers within the next five years. That was literally the biggest number I could dream of at the time. And here's the actual piece of paper. This was a big five-year goal, but the channel crossed that 100,000 subscriber mark about two years after I wrote that goal in February 2021. My process didn't really change during that two-year stretch from 13,000 to 100,000 subscribers. I just kept making videos and trying to improve each one by about 1% every time. Now, every two years, I update that big crazy dreams list. In January 2021, I rewrote that, that I would reach a 500,000 subscriber mark by the year 2026. Obviously, still a long way off right now. But just like before, when I wrote that dream on paper, I thought to myself, Alex, who are you kidding? That is an insane number. How are you ever going to do that? But that's the idea. That's why I call these big, crazy dreams. So it didn't take all five years to get there. We obviously crossed that milestone just two and a half years from writing that goal on paper. With all of this background, the answer to the key question will have some context because I have all of that history in my bloodstream as part of my journey. So what's it like to have a 500,000 subscriber channel? It's fantastic. I am having a blast. I feel like I'm on an adventure. A subscriber, Connie, left a comment recently. She said, you were created to teach this. Love all your teachings. So honest and clear. Thank you. God bless you. Comments like that capture how I feel and are really encouraging. It does feel to me like a calling, not just a channel. It's a genuine joy. Here's some other details about what it's like. It's created a lot of professional opportunities. It helped me and my friend Julian Miravel, for example, get a book deal recently. As they say, link in the description below to that book. I was shocked when literary agents and publishers started to reach out to me instead of the other way around. I was able to start the Communication Coach Academy, which is a private coaching group. My email list has gotten pretty huge. I get invited to be on podcasts with some amazing hosts. So having 500,000 subscribers has opened a lot of professional doors. One difference I've noticed now that the channel is larger, however, is that I feel a greater sense of professional autonomy. I'm extremely busy, but I feel a lot of freedom and independence at the same time. I don't have to ask anybody permission to make a video. I feel like I can speak in my own voice and people are actually listening. I still teach college full-time and I spend a lot of nights and weekends working. So I'm not technically a full-time YouTube creator, that means part of what it's like for me now is that I feel as if I'm constantly working. Some Friday nights, it'll be 8 p.m. And my wife will say, okay, let's put it away for the night because I'm still grading student assignments or doing something for the channel. I work six long days a week doing both college and the channel, but it's fun in other ways because some of my students get a kick out of the fact that I have a channel and my fellow professors are supportive. My supervisor and longtime dean is supportive, all the way up to the college president. They're all really supportive and they say, hey, way to go. So I'm still doing both teaching and YouTube and it's a lot of hours, but the psychological freedom and autonomy and voice that comes with the growing channel feels great. I feel like I'm my own boss. Here's some common questions I get now that the channel has grown. Do you get recognized? Some of my friends have asked me this and the answer is not really. 
That's not important to me either way. There have been only a couple of times where somebody has said, hey, are you Alex Lyon? And I'm so thankful that one of those times my wife and my son were with me to witness that. My wife was like, all right, my guy. But my channel is really just an education channel. It's not about me as a person. This isn't a lifestyle channel or a vlog. And that takes a lot of pressure off me to be an interesting and entertaining individual. Do I have a team helping me? Yes, I have help now behind the scenes. One of my other big crazy dreams on that original list was that I would be able to afford to hire a small team so I didn't have to do everything alone, which I did for the first few years when it was just me. That big crazy dream has come true. So thank you to my good friend Derek for doing lots of the editing. If you ever see one of my videos with good editing, it's because Derek did that one. Thank you, Hazel, for the website help and other social media help and so many other things. I couldn't do it without you. Thank you, Shelly, for helping me make some shorts and other mini content. Thank you, Carlene, for helping me straighten out my email system and parts of the website. A bigger channel helped me create this team. Do you have any viral videos? I've sometimes been asked versions of this question, like, do I make viral videos or do all my videos become popular? Well, not so much. Only a handful of my videos have millions of views. Many of them have only a few thousand views or so. Having a growing channel does not guarantee new videos will do well. It makes it easier, but many of the channel's 500,000 subscribers subscribed two or three years ago and maybe have never watched another video since. So not all videos will have lots of views, and that's all a normal part of every channel's life cycle. Every subscriber, every viewer, and all 27 million individual views has been a part of the journey, and I am grateful for every single one of those. I'd love it if every video had hundreds of thousands or more views, but that's not the way it goes for most educational channels. Do you have haters? Well, about five or 10% of the comments are harsh. Nobody is immune to negative comments. Some critics go through my videos and will post 10 insulting comments in a row on 10 different videos, but they usually lose interest in a day or so and go away. They probably move on to the next channel and say the same type of things on other people's videos. That's more about the critic. That's just about how they are as an individual. That's not really about me. And it's not fun to read that stuff, but it doesn't bother me as much anymore. That's just one of the costs of putting yourself out there. Do I feel pressure that comes with a growing channel? No, not really. It takes a lot of time, as I mentioned, but I recognize I have a good thing going and I feel a sense of responsibility to steward what I've been blessed with. But I feel mainly enthusiastic about the work and about future possibilities. I don't feel burned out after even seven years. And I feel, as if anything, a sense of relief that I'm no longer a beginner trying to learn how to use my camera. A bigger channel also provides the opportunity to give back. Another great thing about a growing channel are the children we sponsor. It's been a long-term goal to work our way up to sponsoring 10 children through Compassion International. I've said for a while that when we reached 500,000 subscribers, we'd bump our sponsorship from eight kids to 10 kids. Here are the photographs of the actual 10 children we now sponsor with funding through the channel. They're all located in Guatemala and most of them are in the same village. And I say we sponsor these kids deliberately because none of this would be possible without you and without the team that helps me. Just by watching, you are making this whole channel go. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart. What does your family think of all this? Well, my family is amazing. My wife and my son are my two biggest supporters. Thank you both. Thanks again to my mom who calls me all the time to talk about my latest video. Thank you to my dad. He passed away, but he was a huge supporter. Thank you to my older and younger brothers who are big supporters and good friends. So 500,000 subscribers, what's that like? It feels like a big, crazy dream that's come true because that's what it is. I mean, what can I say? This has changed my life. The channel is now about seven years old, but on most days I feel like I'm just getting started in terms of my energy level. I'm still excited to make videos and connect with all of you. If any part of this video resonated with you, let me know with a comment. Say hello and join this celebration. I'll read all the comments on new videos and I'll do my best to respond as long as it's not a rando comment. Until next time, thank you, God bless, and I'll see you soon.